An assessment of education policies introduced by the Kufuado administration in its first 23 months in office was mostly dominated by the Free Senior High School program. The Joy FM scorecard event scrutinized the manifesto programs of the governing New Patriotic Party in various sectors, including economy, infrastructure, and governance, and how well it has performed. Professor Peter Quarte, the head of the economic division of the Institute of Statistical, Social, and Economic Research at the University of Ghana, says the current approach to the administration's flagship free SHS program is not sustainable. The economist, who also doubles as an educationist, says governments cannot fund the social intervention program alone and propose the mechanism to identify and support those who are really in need. When I heard Prof. Implementation, I had issues. One is the funding. I, I don't think the current system is sustainable. The government can struggle and struggle to defend it, but from where I sit, I don't see this sustainable. And I've offered some suggestions. Why not target means testing? We, sometimes we throw our hands in the air, we cannot, we cannot identify people. It is not true. We have LEAP. LEAP has over 240,000 beneficiaries. It is one of the well-targeted programs Ghana has ever had. I spent over a, a week or more in the villages assessing LEAP. And they will tell you, it is the computer that selects them. And they believe that those that have been selected are the right people. So if you have 480, 240, we've been able to target. Why can't we scale it up and target uh, SHS uh, students? We can do this. I don't think we should. We should. Another option would be for us to target grade C and D schools and say, look, these schools are free because they, are, they don't have the numbers. So if people go there, they are free. Otherwise, if you go to a grade A school, like Achimota and Wesley Girls and whatever, why do you pay Kofi Bento's uh, son's school fees? I'm meeting Marach Mota. Why do you pay his fees? I mean, it is, I don't think we should do that. There are other things that he would rather prefer government does for him. Provide ambulance for Kofi Bento when he's ill so that he can be, you know, provide a hospital bed. So I think targeting can be done properly. Deputy Education Minister Dr. Yao Edu Chum, however, disagrees. He described as terrible the suggestion that students in underprivileged schools could be made sole beneficiaries of the free SHS policy. When I heard Prof. Kwate say that make category C and D schools for free, code word for saying consign the poor to the poorest performing schools. Terrible. I mean, let, let me tell you, whatever way you look at it, if I'm poor and I'm sitting at home, you are telling me that Achimota is not for you. Mm -hmm. So when people talk about allies to pay, let me tell you, allies to pay, if your child, if your child was sent to Antoine Senior High School and he, you are asked to pay, would you pay? It's when we tell you that you can pay for your child to go to Wesley Girls. That is when we say, I'll pay. What we are saying is this. We're not going to create second-class citizens anymore. We've done that for 60 years. When you talk about a system, the system that was catering to the training of the brightest among us, students with grade 36 are cut off from the system. They can't go to senior high school, and they happen to be from the poorest of families. Is that a system? A system that says that if you get grade 30, you dare not go near Chimota because you don't belong there. Is that a system? We have a serious equity problem in this country. We are all living in jails in our homes, but proof everywhere, afraid of our own shadow, because those children that we cut off, they hit the street, they got resilient on the street, and they are coming after our monies. It was about time we did something different. It was about time we said, we look ourselves in the mirror and said the elite of this country had had enough. And those who are poor should be allowed to get into the secondary education space. And that is why I like the determination of our president who said, let us do it now. Free senior high school now. We've done some kind of piloting for 60 years in the northern part of this country. 
Dr. Yao Aduchum downplayed suggestions the free SHS policy is taking a toll on government finances. When I heard Prof. Kwaite say that make... Joining us is Maxwell Agwagwa later spoke to some members of the public on the proposal that free SHS should target only the poor and needy. For me, I think the, 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 the current approach is not that bad though, but I think we should, we should also listen to the masses because that's what governance is all about. Yes, if we are realizing that like some actually have it in a society that can take care of the payment of the fees, I think that, that would have been good because when uh, the, the ones that are having are actually taking the burden, you will see that it, uh, it will not cause much burden on government that much. So the quality will not be missed. But where those who that have don't pay and me too, I'm poor, me too, I'm not paying, uh, that kind of system, I don't, well, I don't think it, it actually helps though, but if you have it, you can support, I think that would have been the best approach we should have used. Okay. Uh -huh. let, let's, let's just say um, you find yourself in SHS now, um, do you think your parents would have been in a position to pay rather than you benefiting from the free stay? Sure, sure, my parents would have been able to pay, mm. my parents would have been able to pay because my dad, from day one that I was born, my dad knew that really I would be enrolled in school. Free stay high school, I think they should have targeted the infrastructure first. They should have built more schools and other things and bringing more beds to the schools because most of the students weren't having beds to sleep on. But you, were, you, you brought about this free senior high school without even the, the school not having beds and others not having books and libraries for them to learn. So before you can say you can do something for free, you have to get a the, the facilities should be there for the children to come and learn. Right now, that's why we are going for the double track because there are not enough facilities for the students to, to, to depend on. Some of them are not getting better, so we have to accommodate some for a while. Then next, the next three months they come. Even as the, the, the parents are not getting what, what they are trying to mean. Now, very soon, we will have more than 30 dams constructed under the One Village, One Dam policy. This is an assurance from the Deputy Agri Minister, Sagri Bangabe. President Gufado, during the 2016 election in Lengren campaign, promised to build a dam in villages of the three regions of the north via a well-planned irrigation policy. Now, speaking at the Joy FM scorecard, an event that scrutinizes the manifesto programs of the governing New Patriotic Party, the Deputy Agri Minister indicated that the delay in the construction of the East Dams were as a result of the procurement processes by government. If you look at the Pung left bank and the Pung uh, right bank, as well as the Tolo irrigation dams, we have already completed procurement processes and work is ongoing at Pung. Work has started at Tolo and work will be starting very soon at Pung right bank. And there are some other irrigation projects in the north. And we are developing, even though the dams were done, the irrigable land around them wasn't done. And so we are working on that one, and it's being done. Mm -hmm. Then the one village one dam was to be executed by the development authorities. The Northern Development Authority, in particular, was the one that was to coordinate the uh, implementation of that one village one dam program because that lies in the savannah area and you know we had to go through legalities in parliament and everything is now in place procurement processes have taken place and contractors are on site and the construction is ongoing but so uh, very soon please i'm, I'm landing very soon we are going to have uh, more than 30 dams under construction very soon, very soon. Okay. So we are on course, and we'll make sure that by the end of 2019, you'll see a lot of the dams out there to water our livestock and also to provide water for our crops, especially the high-valued crops, that is the vegetables, and then cow, pea, and rice. Okay. Yes. So the Tono, when we finish rehabilitating Tono, we are going to put 2,000 hectares under irrigation. 
Minister for Planning, Professor George Amba, for speaking on progress made in the economy by the MPP government, explained it would take some time for the ordinary Ghanaian to feel the positive impact of the strides made. Your question really is this. All these indicators, are we, is, how is the common man feeling about it? You see, economic indicators themselves are necessary for the welfare of the people, but not essential because, you know, when these economic indicators are there, they have to trickle down to the, the, the ordinary man and doesn't take, it's not very easy to do that. It needs a sustained, you know, stabilization, a sustained uh, GDP growth rate over a period of time a sustained reduce, reduction in inflation over a period of time, a sustained you know, uh, macro indices in all directions you know, for, for some time before you can actually feel it at the grassroots. When President Kufo took over in 2001, the growth rate was also about 3.7%. He managed to get it from 3.7% to 4.5% to 5.7%, until we left at 8 point something percent when he left in 2009, 2008 or 2009. You see, it was sustained over a period of time, and therefore it was, there, there was time for the economy to trickle down to the people on the ground. If it is not sustained that way, and it is actually goes up one time and gets down the other time, and goes up one time and gets down the other time, it is not very likely that it will impact very well on, 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 on the people. But former finance minister said Tekwe believes the MPP government made too many promises before assuming office, hence their struggle to manage the economy. He believes the Kufado government has failed. The uh, VAT, yes, they took out the VAT, 17%, on the sector of the economy that is growing, that is services. When you talk about expanding the tax base, you don't just expand it with, you know, the woman by the roadside. You expand it by bringing sectors of the economy that are growing into the tax net. We cannot exclude services, which is the largest sector of GDP, from the tax base. And so you have to bring it. You can give other concessions to services, to financial services, to all services. You know, okay. yes, that has been taken. But the 17.5% is intact. It is what has been done to the VAT structure that is creating the problem. It has resulted in an increase. I am not saying it, businesses are saying it, by increasing prices. And some of them issue statements to that effect. Taxes have been increased. Apart from the retention of the taxes that should have gone, taxes have been increased. We know it. So my, my top marginal rate, even though I don't end when I was in office, now I'm not, not ending any so, you know, and for middle income and large and uh, others, it was 35. We pointed out that, you know, it was a regressive tax regime. You know, because we are not talking about the banks, those who are earning between 10 and 5 percent, who were also having to pay higher taxes. But that has been revised. Nine, that has been revised. It's been reduced to 30. Yes. Yeah, the, the, the manifesto said they will bring it down to 20. How come it's, it's, at, it's at 30, the top marginal rate? And by the way, the top marginal rate of the tax was fixed, you know, so that businesses, that is companies and individuals will pay the same amount of Top, you know, uh, 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 top marginal rate. I guess I I'm saying to, that. Forgive me, I need to move on now. Yeah, we, I, I we know have, you come back to you. We have the luxury taxes, my last point, the luxury taxes of vehicles and others which have been imposed. Yeah. You know, so this government is not fulfilling its promises, it's doing the reverse of what it said it would do. Uh, we're taking a break here on Joy News Prime, but still ahead in the bulletin, aggrieved customers of Men's Gold stayed first in series of demonstrations to demand payment of the investments with a troubled gold leadership. Now, some customers of Troubled Gold dealership Men's Gold on Tuesday hit the streets in a demonstration to demand payment of the investments locked up with the company. The aggrieved customers, numbering about 100, are demanding, among others, the arrest of the CEO and the confiscation of his assets to settle them. They presented petitions to a number of government agencies, including the Bank of Ghana, which promised to intervene in the situation. The customers have however vowed to continue the protest until they are settled. Nancy Emifat Jradozi has more. 
As the aggrieved customers assembled for the start of the demonstration, they shared personal stories of how terribly they have been affected by the failure of the company to pay them. One of them says she invested 400,000 Ghana cities of money belonging to an orphanage she operates. I can't even sleep. I can't sleep. It, I mean, my case is becoming a police case. A police case because orphanage money is involved. They should give us our money. How, how much are we talking about here? Here, we are talking about 400,000. It stands, I'm in my final year of AIT. Because of this, I've not gone to school the whole of my trimester. Where is the money to pay for the school fees? People put their money there for chemotherapy, people stroke patients. I know of one woman who comes there almost every day, almost every day. Her, her money is with men's gold. She just wants some part of her money to buy drugs. They are not giving it to her. She's in sick. Whenever I see her, I feel pity for her, even though I also cannot help her. The demonstration itself attracted the young, the old of both sexes with their placards doing the talking for them. Their first stop was at the Economic and Organized Crime Office, Iyoko, where the chants got louder. It was the Accra House of Oak Park that they handed over their first petition, which was received by the advisor to the central bank governor. Benjamin Amwa promised the bank would intervene. I want to take this opportunity to urge you to be patient and that we will do all we can in collaboration with the other stakeholders and related authorities and make sure this is resolved amicably. The petition meant for the information ministry was received by Deputy Director of Human Resource, Kofi Ohineba Enin. It is very unfortunate that this issue has happened. So I've been sent here to take this petition. And definitely you make sure the minister that this petition gets to the president and the right quarters in the next line of action to take. The customers were however not convinced by the assurances. For them, government could show a lot more commitment if it could cause the arrest of men's gold CEO. Now what is not about the law? If he's doing something that is not good, that's to arrest him and bring him. Now what is not about the law? And we need our money. Today men's gold is treating us as, as criminals. We are so-called cherished customers. We have now become what? Criminals. Customers. Criminal customers. How on earth? How on earth now, if you are entering men's gold, men's gold uh, office, we need to get security clearance. Their next line of action, according to chairman of the Coalition of Aggrieved Men's Good Customers, Timothy Binob, will be to submit petitions to foreign embassies. We are here today telling men's gold that from today, effective from today, if they don't pay us, another money is come, another demonstration is coming on. And that demonstration will be petitioning, will be petitioning um, the embassies, the foreign embassies in Ghana here. They say should government fail to address their concerns in two weeks, they will take their picketing to the offices of the various agencies involved. Nancy MFA Chodose, Joy News. Meanwhile, chairman of the Coalition of Aggrieved Men's Gold Customers has described as false claims that the company has been paying back the monies. To settle down with the comp uh, second bulk in order to pay us. But Men's Gold entirely neglected with the customers. We had couples of uh, stakeholders' meetings at which they were supposed to honor their obligations. Men's gold never, never paid any penny out of their our in, hard earned Money. investment yeah. that is with them. Yeah. And they go about throwing dust or lying to the whole public that they have been paying us. Me, the leader of this coalition of aggrieved customers of men's gold, is a witness. Yeah. Yesterday, in particular, I had a message. To, have to come to the office for my, my money. I went there and I was then told that the, comp the message that I had was, was from a wrong source and my name is not even listed. 
uh, among those that are, are supposed to get their money. And that'll be all the bulletin for tonight. I'm next to bring you PM Express with Evans Mesa Station.